Today is the first Sunday of Advent. How did that happen? How can it be the end of November already? But it's exciting because Advent is our preparation and our journey for... And the particular thing we're going to focus on today are the names of Jesus. And I love it that uh, when the angel talks to Mary about having this baby, uh, he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. And the reason that we're looking at the names of Jesus is not so that we know about Jesus, although that is a great thing, but so that we get to know Jesus better. So as we look at the names of Jesus, we see who he is. He is Emmanuel, God with us. But he's also the light of the world. I was going to read uh, these verses from um, John chapter 8. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Gosh, we are offered so much in Jesus, light, life, joy, peace, and that's what we're going to be uh, hearing about today. So, next task, having seen that Jesus is the light of the world, is to start lighting our Advent wreath. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king be born in our hearts at Christmas to be king of our lives today. Amen. The reading is from Isaiah 9, verses 2 and 6. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the word of the Lord. So let's uh, turn to these names of Jesus. So what we asked was that uh, parents and young person chatted about this at home, looked in the Bible and then prepared up to four minutes to tell us. And look at this, we've got visual aids. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Daisy. Over to you guys. I've just been elected onto the Copper School Council. However, before I was chosen, I had to look at what qualities made a good school counsellor. This is, this is the poster I made when I did my school speech. It highlights the qualities I believed I needed to do the job of listening and helping others in my class 6K. So it was interesting when Amanda asked my family to talk about what it means when, when we talk about Jesus, the wonderful counsellor. For me, a counsellor is someone who is a good listener and who is approachable, helpful and kind, who understands and is patient. A counsellor is someone who can hear you hear your problems and give wise advice and help you to deal with things that are worrying you. But even the best counsellors can't provide the strength to overcome all our worries. No human has all the answers, but Jesus the wonderful counsellor does, and he knows all about us. Psalm 139 declares that Jesus created every fibre of our being. He knows exactly what we are thinking and what we will do before we do it. We can trust that he watches over our every step. As a wonderful counsellor, Jesus has the power not to speak into our situations, but to resolve them. He knows us completely, leads us perfectly, and is with us forever. We can trust him. He is actively working in our hearts and lives. When we follow him, we put him in the position of wonderful counsellor. We ask him to guide us and advise us in our daily lives. We can trust him to listen to our problems and guide us in the right direction. We know that Jesus is listening because the Bible tells us to pray to him about the things that worry us. There are many counsellors in this world and we speak to the counsellor of the world. We only get worldly solutions. These solutions may last for a while, 
but by putting your trust into Jesus, where he will come on a journey with us, helping us, listening to us, and always holding our hands. He will not just counsel us, but he will counsel us wonderfully. You may have struggles in your life that seem too big. Maybe you have lost your hope for some of them to be solved. But the wonderful counsellor works miracles beyond my comprehension. He carefully listens to our situations and clearly advises us with wisdom. Thank you. Hi, everyone. We've been asked to give some thoughts on God as our eternal father. So, Isla, what do you think the word eternal means? Well, eternal means forever, just like the Lord. And if you love the Lord forever, that means you'll get eternal life. Yes, that's right. It's one of his gifts to us, isn't it? Is that anything to add to that thing? Yeah. Um, it's everlasting and he, and he doesn't go away from it. That's right. Yeah, it goes on and on and on. And it's not dependent on anything we say or do, we see it's there for us already, for us to accept. Yeah, that's it. So, the word Father. We have a Father on Earth, don't we? Mm -hmm. And what do you think makes a really good dad? He's loving. Yeah. What and else, Finn? He helps us. Yeah. And he, and he, and he needs us a lot. Yeah. He's there for us. Yeah. Are his jokes terrible normally? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. I understand. But apart from that, <laughs> a good dad here on earth mm. is loving, forgiving, he protects us, he provides for us. And that is just like our eternal father, isn't it? Except he's more amazing and more brilliant. We've also found a verse in Isaiah, haven't we, guys, in Isaiah 64? Because there are lots of verses in the Bible that talk about God as being our Father. Um, Jesus spoke a lot about his Father as well when he was here on earth. Um, but this verse in Isaiah says, Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. That's good, isn't it, guys? Yeah. It's wonderful that God is our everlasting, eternal Father. Yeah, and he will always be there forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.